you all know that the most important tool an archaeologist uses on site is his or her trowel. I mean, there is no better tool than a trowel, usually a four inch pointing trowel. And the ones that we use are solid forged, solid forged here, sorry, so that they actually take the stresses and strains. Because if you can imagine, if you're troweling through something that's heavy clay, which of course we've got a lot of in this country, uh, or clay with stones in, or sands, it takes, it takes a lot of battering to the tr trowel. So a good solid forged four inch pointing trowel is the archaeologist's main tool. Um, we do get very protective over our trowels because everybody uses them in a slightly different way and there are many ways to use a trowel. Um, and you can see here, I've actually worn one side down more than the other, and that's because I'm right-handed and most of the time I'm using it like that. But there are many different ways of using a trowel and uh, hopefully I'll try and show them here. Um, I mean, the main way that everybody knows who's ever done a dig before to use a trowel is simply this edge flat down to the ground and you pull towards you. Now you always pull towards you because you work your way back cleaning an archaeological site. That way you're not going to be walking over what you've already cleaned. Um, you just want to pull all that loose towards you. So what you end up with is a nice, troweled, clean surface like that. No crumbs of dirt, no little bits left on the surface and you can see the colour changes, you can see everything coming up. So that's the main way that you're going to use a trowel on an archaeological site, using this flat edge and just sort of slicing towards you, keeping the spoil coming back like that. Now there are other ways. Um, um, quite often I like to hold the trowel like that. Now that, as you can see, is very different. But you get a little bit more pressure. So if you're going through something that's like clay, that's quite heavy, or you've got quite a thick build-up on a particular area of a site that you're troweling down and you don't want to mattock it or shovel it. If you hold the trowel like that, you've actually got the whole of your arm pressure on that and you can dig right in and you can pull it back and you can see there you've actually got a lot more pressure on the trowel. But it's not as neat, not as good finish as the other way. But it is useful if you just need to really get quite a bit off when you're troweling. Many people hold trowels lots of different ways. Some people hold them like this. I like to get right down and, and literally hold it against the knuckle of my hand there, which usually means I end up with a blister. <laughs> but that again, you get more power on the trowel. And the one thing you don't normally do with a trowel is use the point. So you, wouldn't, you don't want to be digging in like this because obviously you don't know what you're going to be digging into if you do that. But there are times, say when you've got stones, you might have a cobbled surface, you might have an area of metalling as we call it, something like that. You just use the point and you just want to pick around. You want to define the edges of the stones like that. So you just use the point to get around just define the edges of the stones, which is important if you want to record them, plan them, photograph them. So, um, I mean, as you can see, there are many different ways of using a trowel, and everybody will have their own way of using um, using the trowel. How to hold it, based on, I mean, yeah, um, hand size, strength, for example. Um, but one thing you will always end up with if you use a trowel a lot. Is calluses. <laughs> Have a good lot of plasters to hand. <laughs> Best tool in the world though. Never be without it. <laughs>